Welcome to episode four of the Trav's Outfitter podcast. We're glad you could be with us listening or watching wherever you are. Um, I'm your host, Shane Carlson. I'm joined again by Trav's Out- Outfitter owner, Travis Uthie, as well as the Boys and Girls Club is here today. Matt Steiner, the program director, and Liz Brownell, the executive director, are here with us. And we're super excited to talk about a couple events that the Boys and Girls Club has coming up. Um, and uh, we're s- just super excited. And thanks for, uh, thanks for making the time to be on the Trav's Outfitter podcast. Yeah, thanks for having us. We are definitely uh, excited to share what we do, and, and Travis has been a, a big partner with us. And so it really takes a community to put together a program like the Boys and Girls Club. So we appreciate the opportunity to share what we do. Awesome. We're, we're, we're looking forward to hearing about that. Um, how long have you guys both been with the Boys and Girls Club? I have been with the club for about a total of 15 years. Uh, I was one of those that that came and left and and then decided that I needed to be back at the Boys and Girls Club. So I have about 15 years um, in the fundraising and management capacity. Yeah, so I've been now for eight years. Um, Actually, I think this June was just my eighth year uh, anniversary thing. Uh, And so I've been in a few different settings. Uh, I started out as the youth football program coordinator for the for the club and uh, kind of worked my way into the gym coordinator and then had a few other different kind of roles there uh, and now I'm the program director now for the last I think two three years it, it goes fast and so <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah so I've been with the movement for for eight years now uh, every year just seems to get better and better we keep improving different things and and upgrading areas and so it's been a great great job a great career great organization. And last year, you guys celebrated a huge milestone in the community. Is that correct? That is true. We celebrated our 50th anniversary here in the community. So we were established in 1973 as kind of a a partnership with the city of Watertown and looking for a place for youth to go on. That started with a building in downtown Watertown across the street from Dempsey's. And then we moved to our current location in the 80s. We added on into the 1990s, and then today, about six years ago, we had our last renovation, which was pretty much a full renovation of the full facility. And just over the years, have seen so much growth. When we started 50 years ago, we were probably serving, you know, 25 to 50 youth per day. Now, fast forward into 2024, our numbers for summer have been over 400 youth per day. So it's pretty remarkable to look at the the history of our organization and and to see how that we've grown with the community's needs and really become a premier youth development agency that that serves so many families. Wow, that's that's amazing. Um, I wanted to ask you both, what drew you to serving kids in our community in Watertown or, or just serving kids in general? Go ahead, Matt. <laughs> uh, so mine, I guess my path was maybe a little bit uh, different than maybe a lot of people get into it. I, I started out in the uh, professional golf program uh, as a professional golf management and, and learning how to teach golf and, and such like that. And and so I started with a program called the First Tee, uh, and that's where it kind of drove me working with kids and, and, and teaching kids uh, through golf. Uh, and, and the First Tee was a great program. They use they don't just use golf as a way to teach kids the sport, but they use it as a way to teach kids values uh, and things like that. And so that's really kind of where I developed my passion for, for teaching kids and, and being amongst them and just kind of, you know, teaching them different values with that kind of part of it. And then when I moved back here to South Dakota and I found out about, you know, the Boys and Girls Club, I never was really familiar with the club. I grew up in Sisseton and we didn't have one and, and, and things like that. And this position opened up here and I thought, you know what, this would be a chance to kind of get back into that realm of working with kids again. And again, the, the Boys and Girls Club just offers so many great things, just a, a chance for kids to learn about the values of being respectful and, and being honest and, and you know learning in an environment like the club is. And, and so that's kind of what uh, drew me back into, or got me to, to, to the club, was that, uh, that, that passion of just uh, being with the youth and teaching them those types of things and using sports. And so I was able to get into the football program, which I didn't really have a lot of experience doing football, uh, but I had experience teaching programs and, and doing stuff with those kids. And so, uh, so I got into that and I, I've always loved football and I just loved the program. And uh, that got me into the running into the gym and, and doing even more sports related type uh, activities. And, uh, and just, again, just being in the organization, like every day is such a fun day. It's not, not even just being with the kids, but just being with the staff that we work there. We, you know, we work in a fun environment and, 
uh, an environment that has a purpose of, of you know, developing uh, great individuals and, and kids in our community to, to you know, be something bigger than what they don't even know they could be in the future and things like that. And so that's what I love about the organization is the, the stuff that we can offer, the opportunities that we can offer there at the club. Well, my path started right out of college. I worked for, <clears throat> excuse me, a nonprofit in the higher education setting and then um, kind of moved to Watertown, had time with the club. I did a little bit of healthcare, nonprofit marketing, and then, and then back with the club. So I've really only known the nonprofit path, and I guess my heart is just dedicated to serving others and seeing the need and you know being able to feel good about what we're doing every day with being a very mission-driven organization. So I can't really imagine myself anywhere else um, at, other than the Boys and Girls Club. And like Matt said, it's just a fulfilling career to know that you're giving back you know, to such a wonderful place that we live in and having fun at the same time. And really we're you know, producing the next leaders of tomorrow, um, those kids that we serve. Um, you know, we're focusing on their academic enrichment, on their character and leadership skills, and then their physical well-being. So we're really the full package in, in raising those kids up um, and, and being there to support families is, is really what has drawn me to the career field. You know, Shane, it's, uh, it's interesting. Um, the f- num- podcast number three, we had the police and fire here. And uh, I'm just sitting here listening to Matt and, and Liz. And, and the word character keeps coming up, Shane. You know, I, I think there's something in, in at Trav's Outfitter. Um, character is important to us, too, right? So um, I, just had to, I just had to verbalize that, that, that there's something, there's a, a thread that's going through these podcasts that we're doing. Um, in today's world, it's really, really hard to find people um, in business, um, uh, in all walks of life, that people will be honest, that, that you can count on them, that, that they look you in the eye and they shake your hand and what they tell you they're going to do, they do. It, it's hard to find. And the fact of the matter is, uh, and I'm not just talking about kids that are served by the Boys and Girls Club. But many families, not just in Watertown, not just in South Dakota, but all over America, these children aren't being raised with a lot of those things. And, and so it's, it's important work that, you know, I, as a Christian, we talk about planting seeds, right? And, and you guys are planting a lot of seeds. A lot of you and the, you guys and your staff are planting a lot of seeds that you really don't get to see that seed you might see it pop out of the ground like corn or soybean stew this in our part of the world but you don't get to really see it grow into the full plant the full tree the full flower until years down the road um and that that has to be really fulfilling when those things happen uh, being in the position that you guys are in yeah, it's it, you know it's been really interesting because uh, my my oldest kid is just graduate he just graduated from high school I got another one that's a junior and uh, um, when my first experience with the club as I said with the football program my kids also were in the football program prior to that and and now I'm seeing those kids those same kids that I first started working with in that youth football program graduating from high school mm-hmm. and they're going off to college and they've got scholarships to do all these different things it's like holy cow like i know these kids from when they first started into that similar realm and and what they were doing and so it's really interesting now eight years in now i'm starting to see that that full cycle of now they're becoming adults and they're starting into that next process of making those career decisions and what they're going to go to school for and you could see it you could see glimmers of it like you talked about uh, but now you're actually seeing it at the end and it's Mm -hmm. uh, it's great to be a part of that and like Mm -hmm. you have a little bit of piece of something that you gave into that uh to set them onto that that next step and building that character and, and helping them with those situations. Yeah, that's awesome. That has to be such a rewarding part of the job or, or maybe one of the best parts of the job is seeing the fruits of your labor, the time and effort that you put into these kids um, and then seeing them succeed in real life right in front of your eyes. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. It's it's nothing more heartwarming than when I'm out in the community and I'll maybe go to a restaurant or go to a retail and I'll see one of our club members. And, you know, we, we get to know them over the years when they're with us, so you usually know their first name and they kind of look at you like, I know you, and, and then I'll, you know, maybe recognize them. And 
and then I'll comment and say, "Hey, good for you. What do you? How are you, how are you doing? What have you been up to? What's your role here?" And it's great to see them in a path of success mm. and to see what they're actually doing out in the community as as an adult now. I mean, that's the goal is to to have them be productive adults, and so we're doing that with with the kids that we serve every day. Yeah, that's awesome. Talking about the kids, who's who's eligible? Um, like, what ages can go to the Boys and Girls mm-hmm. Club? How you know? What are the membership fees? What are some of the logistics of the Boys and Girls Club? Certainly, we welcome all um, youth members who are going into first grade, um, all the way up until they graduate from high school. So, first through twelfth grade is welcome at the main club site. Our annual membership is twenty five dollars a year, and that encompasses um, their membership fees. All of the meals that we serve to them, you know, is with, included in that twenty-five dollars. All of our, you know, m- program activities is, is included. So for twenty-five dollars a year, and that's part of our mission is to be affordable to all. Um, we never turn anyone away. If there's a family or, or a situation that arises that they are not able to do that twenty-five dollars a year, we will scholarship them in to be able to be a member. So it's a, a pretty incredible thing. People always say, "Oh, twenty-five dollars a day, a month, a week," you know. And I said, "Nope, twenty-five dollars a year." So we're really proud to have offered that service to the community and. And the reason we're able to do that, again, is the generosity of many businesses and individuals who give back to us through our campaigns or through our special events and our fundraisers that we're able to keep that membership fee low. And it seems to be paying off because, I mean, you, you, just, you mentioned earlier in the show over 400 kids being served, uh, was it weekly? Is that was that the number? A day, daily. A daily. Mm-hmm. Wow, that that is a huge number and a huge testament to the work that you guys have put in. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, f- f- I can't even fathom that we have 400 kids in there. Sometimes it's like uh, it, it doesn't feel like 400 kids just because there's so much available for them to do and so many program areas for them to be in. Uh, but I just remember even just kind of starting out. Uh, you know, it's like we'd get like that. You know, 250 kids or something like. Well, that's a lot of kids, but now it's like we're doing 400 kids every single day and providing lots of opportunities for lots of things. You know, that's not just. Uh, you know, they, they come in, of course, they get meals and things like that, but we're providing them the opportunity to, to be physically fit. We're providing, you know, STEM-related programs and educational activities and a chance for them to express themselves through art or different programs like that on a daily basis. It's happening every single day at the club, and uh, it's, it's so amazing to see some of the, the unique skill sets that these kids have at such a young age even at, the, at this time. We uh, work really hard to program effectively. And what I mean by that is almost like having lesson plans um, in each of our different program areas that are developed months ahead of time. So, you know, they're very purposeful activities. We usually have a goal of what the kids should be learning or participating in. And then, you know, try to ask the kids at the end of the activity, you know, to give them an opportunity to to reflect. That's something Matt's really done a great job with the staff is to gain their feedback on what they enjoyed about that activity or if they liked it or what their favorite part was. So every day uh, we have big whiteboards outside of the program areas. And then the kids really have freedom of choice, which is kind of a unique um, model that that we run. Um, They can pick what activity they want to go to. So they can, you know, utilize all of our 50,000 square feet of of space that we have, and, and then they can kind of choose what they're interested in. And once they finish up that activity, then they can choose to go to another area. So the staff have done an outstanding job of programming everything from gardening club to um, going on college visits to taking kids to field trips to the pool or to museums. I mean, just the activities are so broad and so interesting, and, and we definitely keep them busy all day long. Mm-hmm. Can you talk a little bit more about, you You're kind of mentioned some of the, the programming that you offer. How does it vary from summer to when school starts, or how does that look? Uh, it, it definitely varies a little bit. I mean, uh, so the summertime, we are open much longer. So we, we open at 7.30 a.m., we close at 6 p.m. So the amount of activities we can run on a day are, are, are much uh, much better, uh, too. And, and we can kind of we can kind of stem together like a, a whole variety of like a, a theme of programs too so like a, you know an example would be like our education center 
Uh, we've been running a, a uh, an adventure reading club program uh, throughout the entire summertime, and so kids have been learning about outer space and, and different things like that in different uh, different areas of the world. Uh, and we were to kind of coordinate that with the library as well, the local library. And so uh, on Wednesdays we have what's called Miss Kim's Reading Club, and so the kids head up to the Ed Center and they uh, either do some sort of reading story time type stuff, but then they uh, intertwine that with activities too so it's not just just reading it's kind of hands-on stuff too at the same time but then that following day that thursday then they'll go to the library and they'll do another very related type of activity with that so we're to kind of coordinate them together during the school year our time frame is a little bit shorter with them we're looking at like 3 30 3 45 by the time they get to our building and then we close at 6 30 so we've got about two and a half hours where we try to squeeze it all <laughs> squeeze it all in uh, but we also we're not a school we're after school site so we also have to have fun and so we have to really to be creative, incorporate lots of different fun elements into our activities too. Uh, so the summertime is always great because we have a lot more time with the kids and so we can get a little bit more um, uh, in depth with our programming. Uh, in the school year, it's very quick. We gotta kind of get them in here, get them, get them, some, get them involved in these things and then they're gone, <laughs> they're, they're out the door. Uh, so the, the, that's kind of the biggest change for that is we just have more time with them so we can do uh, more in depth programming with them and, and longer theme things. And, uh, with that part of it and then, then we do in the school year. But it's all very much the same um, as far as the type of stuff that we offer. So we, all, we have uh, five main program areas. We've got our, our gym, which is gonna be our healthy lifestyles type programming, so physical fitness and things like that. Uh, we've got our art room, which is that imagination creative type side of it, so kids can have that access to it. Our education center, then of course, more is for their STEM related uh, building programs. Uh, trivial type questions, learn, you know, learning aspects, reading, um, things along those lines. And then we've got our, our games room, which is our social area. So that's where the kids really learn how to uh, socialize with each other in positive ways, you know, learning about winning and losing and how to deal with those different challenges and just being in a large group setting and how to socialize with each other in, in a, a good positive way. Uh, and then we've got our teen center, which kind of incorporates all of that. Uh, but then what that, uh, that, that involves our more of our Career related, career related type stuff and college educate, you know, college readiness type programs, things along those lines too. Uh, so we have all those programs always just kind of available and open. Uh, just in the summertime, we get to get really more in depth in those types of things and offer more things and uh, with that part of it. But uh, of course, education is a big part of that. Uh, we do a lot with education, especially during the school year. We offer uh, homework assistance uh, for that time frame. We don't see a lot of kids coming with homework anymore over the last couple of years. That's really changed uh, on what kind of comes there. And so we have to try and find new ways to do that. Um, but uh, we do offer that uh, assistance for them uh, during the school year. So that's a big focus and big push for us. Uh, during that school year time. And with all of those programs and everything that you just mentioned, Matt, somebody has to be there to run them. And so talk a little bit about your staff. You've, you've got paid staff, but you've also got some volunteers. Talk about that and how that all works. Yeah, so uh, every programmer is going to have what we call a lead staff. Uh, so that's either, you know, our, our lead art room staff or our lead gym staff. Uh, and so they're the ones that are kind of, they're in charge of that program area uh, and, and making sure that the programs that we've developed are being run on a daily basis. Uh, and they'll typically also have a second person with them too to kind of keep, uh, keep with our ratios and stuff like that that we have. And so uh, th those staff apply for those positions. They either, one, they either have a passion for that. Uh, they either have a passion for education and, and those types of things, or they have an interest in art or, or physical fitness and things along those lines. Uh, and so they, they come and they apply for that and they interview and, and, uh, and we kind of go from there with that part of it. Uh, as far as like our volunteers, the volunteers are great because they're, they're community members that just want to be a part of the club or, or, or offer what they have knowledge in and what they have uh, interest in. And so we have people like uh, the per Prairie Lakes Healthcare System. Uh, dietitians that come over and are teaching kids about the importance of having a well-balanced diet and different fruits and vegetables that you could be eating and snacks you could be making uh, to make healthy choices and things along those lines. Uh, the library that we partner with to go to the library and, and offer those opportunities for kids to get there. I talked to a kid the other day that's like, I've never been to the library here in Watertown. And that's I'm like, you've never been to the library? I can't believe you've been, never been to the library. And like, you can go. We, we have that opportunity for you to do it. We have the Heritage Museum that offers up their time uh, outside of their normal hours for us to bring kids there to to learn about the heritage of Watertown and, and all the history of Watertown and things along those lines too. So uh, those are great pieces and, and great community members. As Liz already talked about, we have great 
uh, great support in the community uh, for what we do and what we offer. Um, but uh, yeah, as far as our staff, and then we train our staff too. And so we have uh, multiple different trainings that they have to go through uh, according to safety protocols and different things along those lines. Uh, but we have uh, trainings that come down from Boys and Girls Club America to help uh, teach our staff how to be best, uh, you know, the best at their job, uh, the skill sets that they're going to need to facilitate programs and work, work with a wide variety of age groups. We serve first to 12th grade and any one of those grade group kids could be in the art room all at one time. So you're not just working with just first and second grade doing an art program. You're working with all those grades and you got to be able to get on all their levels to teach them that same program and make it interesting to them no matter what it is. Uh, and so they, they go through trainings to learn about the best way to facilitate those programs. And Travis, I think it's easy for, at least for myself to, you know, I, you know, I go to the library, like Matt mentioned, a, a student had never been to the library. I think that's really easy to forget that those people, those kids are in our community um, and they're getting served right now by the Boys and Girls Club. Yeah, you know, I, I learned just a few years ago, it, it's a very simple thing and I'm a slow learner, but we don't know what we don't know. And that's, I mean, that it's uh, for whatever reason. Um, and I was raised in a, a family where my dad taught us to work. We didn't play much, we just worked. And um, I'm, when I married Sherry, Sherry's family, they, the dad, her dad worked really hard. He was a superintendent of schools. And, but the rest of them, they played more. And so, so there, it's just, it, it's, not, it's not that one is better or worse than the other. They're just different, right? They're, they're like two different worlds. And so um, we don't know what we don't know. And so I've spent over 20 years learning what it looks like to just play. And Sherry has spent 20 years begrudgingly looking at what it looks like to just work, you know. Um, and so, so I think <clears throat> I think there's something to be said there, right? Um, those experiences um, they might seem very simplistic to many people, but they can be life changing um, to some students. So, uh, what a gift! Absolutely, in, in fact, recognition and instilling a work ethic with the kids is something else that we like to do. So Matt and his team, you know, are always um, looking at kids and, and how to, I guess, praise them and, and give them an honor or recognize them, you know, either by just giving them a high five and saying their name, how's it going, you know, Johnny. Or, mm -hmm. But we have a lot of monthly programs that recognize our outstanding youth members, and that, I guess, you know, probably helps them want to do better. Um, and one of those examples here is, is coming up here next week, or no, in two weeks, um, we have been able to um, book some tickets with the Minnesota Twins um, organization. They've donated some tickets. And normally we take about a van load, you know, maybe 10 to 12 youth members and a couple staff members. Well, this year we really ramped it up. We um, were able to graciously um, receive some additional donations. And this year we're taking a coach bus of, is it 60 kids, Matt? Uh, 50. 50 kids and yep, some staff kids. members. Um, and we are going to load them up on a first class adventure to the Twin Cities and, but they've had to earn it. Um, so this summer, Matt developed a recognition program where they can earn points for doing certain things at the club and, and which has made them work hard. And, and then their reward will be getting to take a seat on that on the Minnesota Twins bus. So That's awesome. I, I just love that. Yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'm one of these guys. I'm not a complete neat freak, but but our society doesn't pick up but just little things, you know, I mean, uh, matter of fact, I was at another business in town. I'm not going to say what it was. And, and I'd been in and out of there a few times and, and it just bothered me. The front of this business was just always, there was so much garbage and it was so dirty. And, and so I was in there and I, I just said to one of the people in there, I said, you know, I don't want to be this guy and I don't want to be complaining, but I, and you guys probably don't come to work through that door, <clears throat> but your customers all come through that door. I'm like, yeah, you probably should take a look at that. You know, I mean, those, those are those there again, you don't know what you don't know. I'm not here to be critical of anybody's home, how they live, how they keep their house, how they, but the fact of the matter is, is that there is, um, there is some self, well, I don't know what you want to call it, maybe self gratitude or self excitement 
when you learn to live your life in a way where you keep things tidy and you keep things picked up and you take better care of yourself and uh, there, you know, I, I tell my, even my sons that work in the business, you know, you got to dress up to show up. Mm-hmm. My youngest son, who's way bigger than me, he only wants to wear t-shirts. Well, but he's a leader of some people here. And so I'm not down on t-shirts, but I'm saying, but I'm saying if you come to work every day and all you wear is a t-shirt, but you want these people that report to you to respect you, you have to dress up to, to show up, right? And, um, and, and each position is different. But what my point is, is, is that there's a lot of probably intangible ways that you guys are affecting these kids just by showing them a, a different way of living, a different way of looking at things. And, um, and so hopefully that's part of what you, you know, these 50 kids had to, you know, we don't oftentimes, maybe you guys don't experience this, but I do. Oftentimes at 54 years old, I don't change until I have to change, right? Or until I want to change. My wife can ask me a million times to change, but until I make up my mind that I want to, I don't, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, hopefully there's a few of those 50 kids that you guys have been able to see a change in. And uh, and hopefully even after this wonderful trip that they're able going to be able to experience, that that change will take hold, right? Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, we we work really hard on, on the respect of each other, um, of staff members, and in the child-to-child relationship. That's been a struggle the last couple of years is how they're treating each other. Mm -hmm. Um, So we've tried to combat that with things, um, teaching kindness. Uh, Mm -hmm. We've had a kindness club that's done some fun activities around to try to engage kids in being kind to each other. And and so that's something that we'll continue to work on and and the respect of the property of the club itself. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a beautiful renovated club and over the years it's it's been really hard sometimes to keep it neat and tidy and clean and mm-hmm. and so the staff do a great job of I guess yeah, being role models of, of how to keep your surroundings nice. Yeah. And it's not easy all the time with 400 kids in the building. For but sure. um, we just had an inspection um, from our national organization a couple weeks ago, and that was one of the things that, that made my heart sing was they said this uh, facility was immaculate and organized and neat, and that was that was wonderful to hear because we, we try That's really awesome. hard to to keep that up. And our kids deserve to have that environment. Yeah. And But we all have to work together. The kids and the staff, um, we all have to work hard to keep it that way. That's you right. Know? So it's a value we've been instilling. Well, the, the kindness part, um, and, the, and I'm not... So many kids nowadays from all walks of life Kindness isn't modeled in their home. Mm-hmm. It just isn't. Great. Tragically, it's not. I we were out at Goodwin for the July third kind of car show thing and celebration. They have fireworks out there, and it's still kind of small townsy. And so my wife and I go to that uh, kind of every year. And and you know everybody's walking down the street, and and uh, this one gal is pushing her granddaughter, and the words that she was saying to her granddaughter. I just wanted to go over to this lady and say, do you understand the effect Mm -hmm. that you're having on this little girl? I mean, I'm sure that this woman had no idea of the effect she was having on this little girl. The same lady that's saying these horrible things to her granddaughter is going to be the one that's going to say, no, you got to be nice. No, you got to be nice. And her granddaughter is probably going, whoa, Wait a minute, you know, what you're saying and what you're doing are two totally different things, right? And that happens in all walks of life. And so with all the kids that you guys are serving, you're bound to run into some of that. And so, so you guys are definitely, uh, you're fighting an uphill battle. It's an honorable battle. But if we're honest about it, it's, it's a challenge, I'm sure. Yeah, it's one of the things that we, we teach our staff and, and remind them about is that we don't know what the situation is that these kids are coming from. And so uh, every day we have to treat these kids like they're, the, you know, it, that, that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where they came from, what, you know, what situation they have come. When they come through our doors, they are the best kids in the world. They're mm-hmm. the, you know, the, we're going to treat them the, the same way every single time they come in. And uh, we're going to, we're just going to kind of go from there and, and just make sure that they have their best experience that they have. Because, again, they could be going home to a very, very troublesome um, home situation and, and stuff going on that we can't even fathom uh, yeah. from time to time. 
And so we have to make sure that their experience that they have at the club is, is one that can change can change them yes. uh, and make them a better person for, for the sure. future. And so as you talked about role modeling, it's a big part of what our staff do. And um, we run a, a mentor program uh, at the club. And so we have a handful of staff that take a little extra time to really get to know more kids, uh, kind of not one on one, but just more a little bit more intimate and in, in what they're in building those relationships a little bit stronger. Some kids that might have that we know have some troubles. And so we want to have a better relationship with them and get to know them. And they've made connections with these kids, the staff already. And so we've, we have uh, we have a groups of, of staff there that uh, really focus on really providing that little bit extra service for those kids uh, to really, again, make a difference for them and and uh, and change that day for them because yeah. we don't we don't know what's going to happen at the end of the day of where they go and, and how that's how that's how they're going to get treated when they leave here. Yeah. Uh, but when they come to the club, they're going to get treated with kindness and respect, and they're going to be tre- uh, taught responsibility and and those types of things, and and uh, and do our best to uh, to raise the next uh, community member and citizen and best citizen they can be. Yeah, that's awesome. Liz, before the show started, we were kind of talking about some of the events that mm-hmm. you guys have coming up. You've got a couple. Uh, and, and we talked about kind of the community involvement and to make the boys and girls club go around the community has to be involved. And, um, so talk about some of those events that are coming up in the Watertown community. So for the last several years, we have had an annual truck raffle. That's what we call it. Support a child win something wild is what it was named way back when. But every year we sell, um, around 1000 tickets. They are $100 each, and and this year the grand prize is a Ford Bronco Sport. And so, again, that's an example of a fundraiser that we do, but the community really surrounds this one well because it's a win-win situation. Um, Someone can give a donation to the Boys and Girls Club, but they also have a chance to win a couple of, of really great prizes. So we are just concluding that fundraiser, and we'll be drawing for those grand prize and the second prize um, next Wednesday, July 17th, um, at the Boys and Girls Club as part of another event, which is what we're calling a block party. So last year, as part of our 50th anniversary, we hosted a block party um, just to celebrate the anniversary and, and have families come together for a free meal and family activities and did the truck raffle drawing at the same time. So that is, again, this coming um, next Wednesday, July 17th. Uh, that will begin at 530, and it's a free event, so we welcome all families to come out. Um, for an evening. Um, On the menu will be hamburgers and corn dogs and some treats um, provided all by the Boys and Girls Club. And we have our staff and board members will lead out on several activities and games in an outdoor manner. Hopefully it doesn't rain, right Matt? (laughs) Otherwise we'll be moving all of it into the gymnasium. And then um, at six o'clock we will draw um, for those grand prizes for our annual truck raffle. And so we just welcome everyone to come out and enjoy a fun evening and um, learn more about the Boys and Girls Club. If you've never had a chance to step in and, and have a little mini tour, we'd love to, to show you around. And, and, and it's kind of uh, valuable to see what we do. Um, many people think, oh, it's just one big room and you just have kids running around and it's kind of mass <laughs> chaos. It, it can be like that some days, but um, once we have... You know, community members come in and see what we're doing, and they actually visualize the different program areas and all the neat equipment that we have to serve kids. It's it really helps them understand what we do. So again, next Wednesday is that signature event, five thirty to seven thirty. And to your knowledge, are there any tickets left? Yes, there are a few tickets left. So if you haven't gotten one, um, please give us a call. We can do the transaction over the phone, or you can stop into the Boys and Girls Club as well. So. Well, before you go, we'll have to go down to the office. My wife thought that she missed out. And oh. She thought they were all sold, okay. so nope. we'll, we'll give you. We'll buy a couple of them before you leave Okay, here. And, and thanks to Travs for being a sponsor of that event. Um, we've worked together the last couple years, and, and it just shows your, your commitment to serving kids and, and being part of that fundraiser. We couldn't do it with without, you know, the, the businesses in the community that lend a hand to that fundraiser as well. So we appreciate that. Yeah. Well, we're glad that we have an opportunity to be part of it. So, yeah, it's a fun one. Um, we're going to keep doing it as long as we, we can, you know, sometimes fundraisers have, have their, you know, shelf life, I yeah. guess you could call it. And, and this one has, has just been continued to be a popular one. So yeah. we're going to keep rolling with it That's as good. long as we can. 
a couple of questions before we wrap up here. One, what is a way that people can get involved with the Boys and Girls Club? And then the second part of the question is, what is something that you want people to know about the Boys and Girls Club that they probably don't know? I would say a way to get involved um, would be to uh, give back as a community partner through your business. Um, that could be offering you know, workforce development opportunities to welcome kids to come in and do a job shadow or tour your business. Um, and we're really trying to build that culture of workforce development, as we talked about earlier, that work ethic and what it means to work and, and have a career and gain some interests you know, at the Boys and Girls Club. So we welcome people to serve in that way. Um, we do have a board of directors. Um, that's a 24 member volunteer board that um, serves us in governance and and leadership, you know, with finances and staffing and, you know, all of our development work that we do. So if anybody is ever interested in a role on our board of directors, they could certainly contact me or one of the other board of directors. So those are a couple of ways that, that people can can give back. That, that last one, that's a, that's a, a tough, tough one. Question. I know. Um, so many things. <laughs> I think from the years that I've been with the club, and like I said, I was never really from with the Boys and Girls Club until I moved to Watertown and my kids started going there. Um, but I, after working, I think there's always been a little bit of like a stigma of what the Boys, Boys and Girls Club can be or, or is. You know, it's maybe a place for where a lot of naughty kids are or, or, or just for little kids and, and things like that. And so I think a thing I'd like people to know is that we are the organ the organization and, and the facility and stuff that we have it is it is a great place for all age groups for for that first through 12th grade there is something there for everybody so even if they're seniors in high school there's some really great stuff going on and opportunities for them to be a part of uh, some cool stuff and, and things that they're interested in and we work very very hard to make sure that uh, the club is a, a very positive place and a place where we are working on developing very very positive, uh, good kids uh, and, and helping them with you know whatever struggles and situations are going on. So uh, it is uh, like I said. I think I think there's always been a stigma about the club, and and we're working very very hard to change that and making sure that the, it is not that type of place that people maybe think it used to be or, or is or could be. Um, it's a it's a very very positive place, and we have the right. Uh, people working on our on our in our facility with our staffing and stuff like that are that are there to really uh, make a difference with our with your youth and so come check it out just if you want to do a tour come come to the club and take a tour and and uh, I know Liz and Kelly and anybody would be willing to just take you around the club and show you all the cool stuff going on uh, every Wednesday we have uh, orientation and so if you have a kid that you're just not sure where you know want you want them to go somewhere but you're not really familiar with the club. Uh, just come on those nights and uh, and come take a tour and see what the club's about and and things along those lines. And so that's that's the thing I think that uh, uh, I would say just want people to know that uh, the club is a, a place for all those age groups of kids to find something for them to do and be a part of. That's a very positive place for them to be. Yeah, to kind of piggyback on what Matt said too, um, it's a lot harder to be a kid today than it was for us growing up as a kid. There's a lot more social pressures, um, relationship, you know, difficulties, family dynamics, trouble at school, bullying. Um, and what people don't know about the Boys and Girls Club is that inside our walls, we are, are trying to help with all those things. So we're not just the place to go play some basketball and have a bag of Cheetos, okay? <laughs> we're the place to, to come to learn about, you know, how to overcome challenges that these kids are maybe having. So we kind of call it um, a set of prevention programs that we're offering. So on a daily basis, that might be teaching kids about the harmful effects of tobacco through a program called Catch My Breath, um, which is um, strives to teach them about um, the negative effects of vaping and, and tobacco use. Um, it might be putting kids in and building a relationship with our licensed social worker. Uh, that's a new position that we added a couple of years ago. We felt that we needed that person on the floor to kind of bridge the gap between um, school time and home time and club time to get everyone on the same team. We're working together to, to better these kids, but it, it sometimes takes a few people to help them. And so open communication with parents and the school system and how we can help those kids 
um, is, is so important. So we're so much more than just the recreation part. Um, we're trying to be there, you know, for those services to, to help with those emotional and social challenges that, that kids are really facing today that, that are, are growing steadily, you know, as we see it. It's, like I said, just tougher to be a kid today. Do you want something for me, Shane? Something, love that, something that people wouldn't know? Yeah, Most people absolutely. wouldn't know. You know, I just have to say this, that one day I hope to run for public office. I don't know whether I'm electable, but that's just something I've always wanted to do. And so, you know, part of my trying to always be open with people is, is I just don't want any skeletons in the closet, right? So if I run for public office, I don't want somebody to say, well, he did this or he did that. But I have to tell you guys about, I have a story about the Boys and Girls Club. Okay. I think it was from 1982 or 1983. You were still in the building uptown. And I was, I was not a good kid. Um, I had a couple of buddies, and we had figured out the idea that there was a thrill in shoplifting from stores in town. Well, I got caught because I was the dumbest one of the three uh, at Pomida, which is now the Peddler's Market. And the police, I have to tell you this part of the story, and then I'll get to the Boys and Girls Club part, but I was raised by a mom and dad that were right was right and wrong was wrong, and there was no debating about that. So I get caught, they call, the police come and get me, they haul me up to the police department, and they call my mom, and my mom says, lock him up. Wow. And, the, and she hangs up the phone. And these two police officers are looking at each other, and they're like, yeah, well, we don't have a place for him to be. So they wait about 15 minutes. They call my mom and they say, Mrs. Youthy, um, we really need you to come get your son. Um, and she's like, you don't understand what I said. He's going to spend the night in jail. And they're like, well, we don't have a juvenile place for him to be. And she said, well, I don't care. Put him in with an adult. He needs to learn. And she hung up. <laughs> <laughs> and so these police officers were looking at each other and like, what are we going to do with this kid, right? Well, the third time, she finally decided that she would come down and pick me up. And I was kind of hoping that they would lock me up because uh, that may th have been easier. things weren't yeah. very good at home. <laughs> but long story short, um, I was put in touch with Linda Shep. And mm -hmm. I went to a few sessions with Linda Shep. And, um, and she... You know, she's not the only person, but she is one part of the thread. She's one part of the seed, you know, one seed that was planted or watered or sunshine was put on it. And and here I am at 54 years old. And uh, thankfully, um, I decided that I wasn't made for a life of crime. And um, and I've been able to not be incarcerated. And I'm thankful for that. But there's probably a there's probably a small piece of that that probably had to do with the Boys and Girls Club and, and Linda Shep at the time. So see, I just got that out now. So, yes, you so when I run for public it. office, uh, somebody will won't be able to say, Well, I've done some digging, and back in nineteen eighty two or nineteen eighty three he got caught stealing from Pomida. So that now it's out in the open. So and Linda probably still remembers you and can I'm probably sure. recall the circumstance. Um, she was a, a longtime employee, over 30 years, yeah. and, and touched yeah, thousands of lives of kids and parents and, and working with them. And yeah, so she she still comes in today. She likes to come visit us. She yeah. she likes to keep the relationship alive. And and kind of fast forward now, you know, here we are many years later, the Diversion services is what we call it now, but we're still very involved with Coddington County and providing an opportunity for kids who do get in trouble. Um, those first time offenders who have a nonviolent crime, their first stop is really the state's attorney and then um, the Boys and Girls Club. So we have a diversion program that sees, um, you know, hundreds of kids every year and then we have Lewis Canfield, the diversion director who works with them, and they have 90 days to kind of complete a program, whether that be um, apology letters, community service, um, taking some classes, might be a referral to the human service agency for whatever kind of challenge they're going through. But then if they complete that program, then that uh, offense will be removed off their criminal record. And we're just helping so many kids and parents through that program. It's just 
it's kind of where we started. We started mm-hmm. as a diversion program back in the 70s, and, and now full circle, 50 years later, we're we're back at that same element and, and making even a bigger impact. than. So you're telling me all I had to do is just get a hold of Lewis, and we could have found out, and it might have been wiped from my record, so I might have been honest about something that I didn't need to be. That's what you're telling right. me? Yeah, it could be. Okay. So, again, that's just another example of kind of, you know, we're, we're – we're very untraditional about what we've been doing. We know that we need to meet kids where they're at today um, and, and adapt. Um, so that's what I love about our organization. If you could ask me a, a very descriptive word, I'd, I'd say we're very adaptive to mm-hmm. what the community needs now. Well, that's a, a, an awesome conversation. And we're so happy that Liz and Matt, you were able to join us today. And Travis, you always said you weren't much of a runner. So I guess if you're going to be a thief, you better be a runner. Otherwise, <laughs> it'll catch you pretty easy. So, Well, I've decided that a life of crime probably isn't the right plan for me. So yeah, I think you made a good decision. I've got, uh, I'm, I've just, uh, I'm too honest. My face is too honest. I give myself away. Well, we just want to thank you again, Liz and Matt, for joining us today on episode four of the Travs Outfitter podcast. Um, And we hope you enjoyed our conversation and were able to learn something. And if you want to get involved with the Boys and Girls Club, please contact them or contact the Boys and Girls Club, and they'd be happy to help you out there. Um, And remember to subscribe to our podcast wherever you prefer to listen or check us out on our our YouTube page to watch the full-length video. Um, Until next time, we'll uh, we'll be back for episode five.